Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Tonight's game is brought to you by TCGPlayer.com, where you can find all of your cards online while still supporting local game stores, Dragon Shield for all the best accessories to protect your decks, and through Patreon, where you get awesome benefits for your direct support. For tonight's game, we play with our patron, Marcus. He signed up for our Mox Pearl tier, and as a result, gets to play with us for this episode. However, he issued us a challenge. He wanted to assign us a random commander and try to make it as powerful as possible. So that's exactly what we did. We went to the random commander generator, selected good commanders only with no other restrictions, and rolled the proverbial dice. Mike received Villas, Broker of Blood. Marcus received Titania, Protector of Argoth. Adam received Nezahal, Primal Tide. And Ryan received Yeheni, Undying Partisan. So we all got to work building our decks as powerful as we could, and now you get to see the result. Be sure to check out our deck list in the description below to see what we each came up with. If you want to play with us and be on an episode of Playing With Power and do fun things like this, consider signing up to our Mox Pearl tier today. So let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Mike, piloting Villas, Broker of Blood. This is a mono black deck that takes advantage of Ad Nauseam, Reanimation, and synergies with Villas to defeat his opponents. Mike's opening hand contains a Swamp, Verdant Catacombs, Dance of the Dead, Demonic Tutor, Imperial Seal, Mana Crypt, and a Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Next, we have Marcus, piloting Titania, Protector of Argoth. This is a proactive deck that abuses Guy's Cradle to its fullest to pump out absurd amounts of mana, and use that advantage to close out the game. His opening hand contains three Snow-Covered Forests, Manglehorn, Scroll Rack, Birds of Paradise, and a Strip Mine. After that, we have Adam, piloting Nezahal, Primal Tide. This is a control deck that looks to interact early, generate card advantage with its commander, and then finish the game with a number of different mono-blue combos. His opening hand contains an Island, Academy Ruins, the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale, Mystic Remora, Thassa's Oracle, Winds of Rebuke, and a Fabricate. Finally, we have Ryan, piloting Yeheni, Undying Partisan. This is a turbo ad nauseum list that looks to go as fast as possible and leave its opponents in the dust. His opening hand contains an Exsanguinate, Imperial Seal, Arcane Signet, Swamp, Reanimate, Cavern of Souls, and a Bubbling Muck. Without further ado, let's begin this vicious, villainous, vivid, vexing venue of value. Mike wins the Kaldheim Viking Roar Challenge and gets to start us off. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Swamp. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts a Demonic Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and Mike passes the turn. Marcus draws a card for turn and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts a Birds of Paradise. He passes. Adam draws a card for turn and plays an Island. He casts a Mystic Remora. Adam ships the turn. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a Swamp. He casts an Imperial Seal. Remora triggers and Adam draws. Ryan fetches up a card onto the top of his library and loses two life. He ends his turn. During his upkeep, Mike loses his Mana Crypt flip and takes three damage. He draws and plays a Burning Catacombs. He cracks it, pays one life, and fetches up a Swamp onto the battlefield. Mike pays six life and casts Kyrick, Son of Yogmoth. He pays two life through Kyrick and casts his own Imperial Seal. Remora triggers and Adam draws. Kyrick triggers and Mike puts a plus one plus one counter on him. He then fetches up a card onto the top of his own library and loses two life as well. He passes. Marcus draws and plays a Strip Mine. He casts a Scroll Rack. Remora triggers and Adam draws. He ends the turn. During his upkeep, Adam pays for Mystic Remora. He draws and plays a Scalding Tarn. He cracks it, pays one life, and fetches up an island onto the battlefield. He passes the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Cavern of Souls, naming Vampire as it enters. He casts an Arcane Signet. Remora triggers and Adam draws. Ryan passes to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike wins his Mana Crypt flip. He draws and then pays two life through Kyrick to cast Duress, targeting Adam. Kyrick triggers and gets a counter. Remora triggers and Adam draws. Duress resolves, Adam reveals his hand, and Mike has him discard a Force of Negation. Mike then pays six more life through Kyrick to cast Peer into the Abyss. Kyrick triggers and gets a counter. Remora triggers and Adam draws. In response, Marcus activates Scroll Rack, exiling five cards, drawing five, and then rearranging the exiled five on top of his library. Peer into the Abyss resolves, Mike loses half of his life, and then draws 43 cards. Mike plays a Swamp. He pays two life through Kyrick and casts a Viscera Seer. Kyrick triggers and he gets a counter. He casts a Dark Ritual. Kyrick triggers and gets a counter again. Remora triggers and Adam draws. He pays four life through Kyrick and casts a Grey Merchant of Asphodel. Kyrick triggers and gets a counter. Gary enters the battlefield, Mike opponents lose 6 life, and then Mike gains 18. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Kyrick. Ryan takes the hit and Mike gains 8. In his second main phase, Mike casts Mox Opal. Remora triggers and Adam draws. 
He pays 2 life through Kirk and casts Culling the Weak, sacrificing Gary as an additional cost. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. Remora triggers and Adam draws. In response, Adam casts Dispel, countering Culling the Weak. Next, Mike pays 2 life through Kirk and casts Blood Pet. Kirk triggers and gets a counter. He casts a Lotus Petal. Remora triggers and Adam draws. Mike pays 2 life through Kirk and casts a Reign of Filth. Kirk triggers again and gets another counter. Remora triggers and Adam draws again. Mike sacrifices his blood pet and his lotus petal, pays for life through Kirk, and casts Chainer, Dementia Master. Mike then presents a loop of paying 9 life to activate Chainer's ability through Kirk, reanimating Grey Merchant, draining his opponents through Grey Merchant, and then gaining 24 life each time. He then sacrifices Grey Merchant to Viscera Seer. He uses this loop to drain out the whole table and win the game. What an amazing turn 3 win from Mike. Kirk was definitely the most valuable card in that game with the ability to leverage life as a resource in a way that very few other cards can do. Since that game was so fast, the team decided to play another. First in this game, we have Marcus returning with Titania, Protector of Argoth. His opening hand contains a Boreal Druid, Nature's Claim, Snow-Covered Forest, Wayward Swordtooth, Gaius Cradle, Food Chain, and his London Mulligan is a City of Traders. Next we have Adam bringing back Nezahal, Primal Tide. His opening hand contains two islands, Prismatic Vista, the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale, Brainstorm, Ponder, and his London Mulligan is an island. After that, we have Ryan returning with Yeheni, Undying Partisan. His opening hand contains a Sensei's Divining Top, Exsanguinate, Slaughter Pact, Felwar Stone, Diabolic Intent, Everflowing Chalice, and a Swamp. Finally, we have Mike piloting Villas, Broker of Blood. His opening hand contains a Swamp, Burning Catacombs, Mind Blame Renderer, and his four London Mulligans our Mana Vault, Wishclaw Talisman, Final Parting, and Dismember. Sorry about that, Mike. And then Marcus gets to start us off. Marcus draws a card for turn and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts a Boreal Druid. He passes the turn. Adam draws a card for turn and plays an Island. He casts a Ponder. He looks at the top three, rearranges, and draws a card. He ends the turn. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a Swamp. He casts a Sensei's Divining Top. Ryan shifts the turn to Mike. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Verdant Catacombs. He cracks it, pays one life, and fetches up a swamp onto the battlefield. He passes. Marcus draws and plays a Gaia's Cradle. He casts a Reclamation Sage. It enters and then targets Sensei's Divining Top. In response, Ryan activates Top, drawing a card, and then putting Top on top of his library. Marcus then ends his turn. Adam draws and casts a Brainstorm. He draws three and puts two back on top. He plays a Prismatic Vista. He cracks it, pays a life, and then fetches up an island onto the battlefield. Adam passes to Ryan. Ryan draws and plays a swamp. He casts a Felwar Stone. He recasts Sensei's Divining Top. He ships the turn. Mike draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Mind Blade Render. He ends his turn. Marcus draws and plays a Snow-Covered Forest. He casts a Wayward Swordtooth. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Reclamation Sage. Ryan takes the hit and Marcus passes. Adam draws and plays the Tabernacle at Pendril Vale. The two black decks shrug, the green deck shudders, and then Adam passes the turn. Ryan draws and casts his Commander, Yehini, Undying Partisan. He ships the turn to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike pays to keep his Mind Blade Render. He draws and moves the combat. He attacks Adam with Mind Blade Render. Adam takes it, and then Mike loses a life and draws a card. In his second main phase, Mike plays a Swamp. He casts a Mind Stone and then ends his turn. During his upkeep, Marcus pays to keep his creatures. He draws and moves the combat. He attacks Mike with Rex Age. Mike takes it, and in his second main phase, Marcus casts a Crucible of Worlds. Marcus passes. Adam draws and plays an Island. He decides to hold open mana and then passes to Ryan. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for Yuhini through Tabernacle. He draws and casts an Everflowing Chalice, kicked once. Ryan ends the turn. During his upkeep, Mike pays for his Mind Blade Render through Tabernacle. He draws and plays a Swamp. He casts a Lotus Petal. He passes the turn to Marcus. During his upkeep, Marcus pays for Boreal Druid and Wayward Swordtooth through Tabernacle. He lets his Reclamation Sage die. Yuhini triggers and gets a plus one plus one counter. Marcus draws and casts a Scroll Rack. He passes. At the end of Marcus's turn, Adam casts Frantic Search. He draws two, discards two, notably Echo of Eons, and then untaps three lands. Still in his end step, he flashes in a Hull Breacher. In response, Marcus activates his Scroll Rack, exiling three, drawing three, and then rearranging the exiled cards. Then Hull Breacher resolves. Still in the end step, Ryan casts Slaughter Pact, destroying Hull Breacher. Yehini triggers and gets a counter. The turn then passes to Adam. Adam draws and plays an Island. He casts a Thought Vessel. He ends his turn. At the end of Adam's turn, Ryan activates Top, looking at the top three and rearranging them accordingly. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for Yehini through Tabernacle. 
he also decides to not lose the game and pay for Slaughter Pack. He draws and plays a Swamp. He passes to Mike. During his upkeep, Mike pays for Mind Blade through Tabernacle. He draws and moves the combat. He attacks Adam with Mind Blade. Adam takes a hit, and Mike loses a life and draws a card. Mike ships the turn to Marcus. During his upkeep, Marcus pays to keep his creatures. He draws and then activates his scroll rack. He exiles four, draws four, and then rearranges the exiled four. He plays a Bonder's Enclave. He follows it up with a food chain. In response, Adam casts Swan Song, targeting the food chain. Food chain is countered, and then Marcus creates a 2 2 bird. Marcus ends his turn. Adam draws and casts Impulse. He looks at the top four, puts one into his hand, and then bottoms the rest. He delves away some of his graveyard to cast Dig Through Time. He looks at the top seven, puts two into his hand, and then bottoms the rest of those. He casts a Graph Digger's Cage. He passes. At the end of Adam's turn, Ryan activates Top, looking at the top three and rearranging. During his upkeep, Ryan pays for Yehenny through Tabernacle. He draws and casts a Mox Opal. He taps a Swamp for mana and then plays a Lake of the Dead, sacrificing his Swamp. He casts a Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Yehenny. He fetches up a card into his hand. He activates Lake of the Dead, sacrificing a Swamp and making four black mana. He casts an Ad Nauseum. It resolves, and then Ryan reveals a Crystal Vein, Springleaf Drum, Calling the Weak, Swamp, 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 Grim Tutor, another Swamp, Basalt Monolith, Defense Grid, three more Swamps, Clark Clan Ironworks, Walking Ballista, Swamp, Dark Ritual, Arcane Signet, Swamp, Peat Bog, Thought Vessel, Phyrexian Tower, Praetor's Grasp, Mind Stone, Cabal Ritual, Dance of the Dead, Helm of Awakening, and a Prismatic Lens, deciding to stop there. He casts a Phyrexian Walker. He casts a Dark Ritual and makes three black mana. He casts a Helm of Awakening. He casts a Springleaf Drum. He casts a Conjurer's Bobble. He taps the Phyrexian Walker with Springleaf Drum for a black. He casts Calling the Weak, sacrificing Phyrexian Walker and making four more black. He casts Cabal Ritual with Threshold, making five more black. He casts Kark Clan Ironworks. He casts a Thought Vessel. He casts a Mind Stone. He casts a Prismatic Lens. Ryan casts a Grim Tutor. In response, Mike casts an ad nauseum of his own. It resolves, and then Mike reveals a Gemstone Caverns, a Bolus of Citadel, a Swamp, another Swamp, Opposition Agent, Imp's Mischief, Peer into the Abyss, Everflowing Chalice, Dark Confidant, Inquisition of Kozilek, Duress, Marsh Flats, Sensei's Divining Top, Prismatic Vista, City of Brass, Swamp, Cabal Coffers, Swamp, Toxic Deluge, Buried Alive, and a Cabal Ritual, deciding to stop there. With Grim Tutor still on the stack, Mike casts Cabal Ritual. He makes three black and then flashes in an Opposition Agent. Opposition Agent resolves, and then Grim Tutor resolves, and then Mike searches Ryan's library for a card and exiles it. And then Ryan loses three life. Ryan casts an Arcane Signet. He casts a Basalt Monolith. He casts a Defense Grid. He casts Praetor's Grasp, targeting Mike. With everyone searching everyone else's library, Ryan fetches up a card from Mike's library and then exiles it face down. He sacrifices Conjurer's Bauble to Kark Clan Ironworks, making two colorless mana, and then casts Mike's Scourge Familiar from Exile. He then taps and sacrifices every artifact he has to KCI, including KCI to itself, for 26 colorless mana. He discards 14 cards to Scourge Familiar and makes 14 black mana. He then casts Exsanguinate, where X is equal to 39. Ryan's opponents each lose 39 life, Mike and Adam die, and Ryan gains 117 life. Ryan was one card short of winning the game, but he puts Marcus to one. Ryan then regretfully passes the turn. Marcus draws and activates Scroll Rack. He exiles three cards, draws three, and then rearranges the exiled cards. He casts a Scavenging Ooze. It enters, and then Marcus gains the city's blessing. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with a sword tooth and the swan. Ryan takes a hit, and Marcus passes. Ryan draws and casts Reanimate, targeting Reclamation Sage in Marcus's graveyard. In response, Marcus activates Bonder's Enclave and draws a card. He then activates Scavenging Ooze, exiling Rex Sage from his graveyard, gaining a life, and putting a plus one plus one counter on the Ooze. Reanimate fizzles, and Ryan passes the turn. Marcus draws and casts a Garuk, Primal Hunter. He activates Garuk's first ability and creates a 3-3 beast. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Sword Tooth, Scavenging Ooze, and the Swan. Ryan takes it and Marcus passes. Ryan draws and plays a Swamp. 
he sacrifices a swamp to Lake of the Dead for four black mana. He recasts his commander, Yeheni, Undying Partisan. In response, Marcus activates Scroll Rack. He exiles one, draws one, and then puts the exiled card on top. Yeheni resolves, and Ryan ends his turn. Marcus draws and activates Garuk's second ability and draws five cards. He casts an Arbor Elf. He casts a Realms Uncharted. He fetches up a Wasteland, Strip Mine, Rashadden Port, and a Command Beacon. Ryan chooses to put Strip Mine and Wasteland into Marcus's graveyard and the rest into his hand. Marcus plays a Command Beacon. He sacrifices it and puts his commander, Titania, Protector of Argoth, into his hand. He casts Titania. It enters and he returns Command Beacon from his graveyard to the battlefield. He casts a Noxious Revival and puts Food Chain onto the top of his library from his graveyard. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan with Scooze, the Beast, and the Swan. Ryan takes it and Marcus passes the turn. Ryan draws, takes no actions, and passes. At the end of Ryan's turn, Marcus activates Scroll Rack for 6, exiling, drawing, and rearranging. Marcus draws and casts a Lotus Cobra. He casts a Food Chain. He then presents a loop of exiling Titania to Food Chain for 6 green mana and putting it into the command zone. He then sacrifices Command Beacon to return Titania to his hand, recasts Titania, and then she returns Command Beacon to the battlefield from the graveyard untapped. When this happens, Lotus Cobra triggers and makes a green mana. He can then use this loop to make infinite mana. He sinks this mana into Scavenging News and exiles every card from Ryan's graveyard. There were two creatures among them, so Marcus gains two life and puts two plus one plus one counters onto Scooze. He casts Life's Legacy, sacrificing Wayward Swordtooth and drawing five cards. Yehenny triggers and gets a 1-1 counter. Marcus activates Scroll Rack for 9, drawing, exiling, and rearranging. He casts Azusa, Lost But Seeking. He plays a Strip Mine and a Wasteland from his graveyard through Azusa and Crucible of Worlds. He sacrifices Wasteland to destroy Lake of the Dead. Titania triggers and Marcus creates an Elemental. He sacrifices Strip Mine to destroy Ryan's Swamp. Titania triggers again and Marcus creates another Elemental. He casts an Eternal Witness. It enters and then he returns Life's Legacy to his hand from his graveyard. He plays a Dark Depths as his final land drop for the turn. It enters with 10 ice counters on it. With his infinite mana, he pays to remove all of the counters, sacrifices Dark Depths, and then creates a 2020 indestructible Merit Lodge. He casts Life's Legacy again, sacrificing Merit Lodge and drawing 20 cards. Yehenny triggers and Ryan puts a plus one plus one counter on it. Marcus then casts Finale of Devastation where X is equal to 30 quadrillion. He moves to combat and attacks Ryan, winning the game. What an amazing game. Ryan was so close to victory, putting Marcus at only one life. Marcus stuck it out and fought until the end and snatched his win from Ryan. That was so much fun that we decided to play one final game. In the final game, Adam brings back Nezahal, Primal Tide. His opening hand contains an Island, Lonely Sandbar, Frantic Search, Impulse, Mana Drain, Nexus of Fate, and a Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Next, Ryan returns with Yeheni, Undying Partisan. His opening hand contains a Cabal Therapy, Dark Ritual, Two Swamps, Sensei's Divining Top, Soul Ring, and a Mana Vault. After that, we have Mike bringing back Villas, Broker of Blood. His opening hand contains a Gemstone Caverns, Two Swamps, Duress, Mindblade Render, Crypt Gas, and a Defense Grid. Finally, we have Marcus returning with Titania, Protector of Argoth. His opening hand contains two snow-covered forests, Beast Within, Food Chain, Guy's Cradle, Ramen Up Excavator, and Elenor Elves. Adam wins the Playing With Power Spelling Bee and gets to start us off. But Mike has a pre-game action and puts Gemstone Caverns onto the battlefield, exiling Defense Grid. Adam draws a card for turn and plays an island. He casts Careful Study. He draws two and discards two, which was a Nexus of Fate and a Kozilek, Butcher of Truth. Adam shuffles Nexus into his library and then shuffles his graveyard into his library through Kozilek. After wasting everyone's time, he passes the turn to Ryan. Ryan draws a card for turn and plays a Swamp. He casts a Soul Ring. He casts a Mana Vault. He casts Sensei's Divining Top. Ryan ships the turn to Mike. Mike draws a card for turn and plays a Swamp. He casts a Mind Blade Render. He ends the turn. Marcus draws a card for turn and plays a Snow Covered Forest. He casts a Land of War Elves. He passes. Adam draws and casts a Ponder. He looks at the top three, doesn't like what he sees, and shuffles. Yet again. He draws a card and then plays a Lonely Sandbar, tapped. He ends his turn. Ryan draws and plays a Swamp. He casts his commander, Yeheni, Undying Partisan. He passes the turn. Mike draws and moves the combat. He attacks Adam with Mind Blade Render. Adam takes it, Mind Blade Render triggers, and Mike loses a life and draws a card. In his second main phase, Mike plays a Swamp. He casts a Thought Vessel. 
He casts a Hope of Giripur. He passes to Marcus. Marcus draws and then casts a Jeweled Lotus. He plays a Strip Mine. He cracks it and destroys Mike's Gemstone Caverns. He cracks Jeweled Lotus and then casts his Commander, Titania, Protector of Argoth. It enters and then Marcus returns Strip Mine from his graveyard to the battlefield. He cracks Strip Mine yet again and targets Ryan's untapped Swamp. Titania triggers and Marcus makes an Elemental. In response, Ryan taps his Swamp and activates Top. He looks at the top three and rearranges. Ryan's Swamp is destroyed and Marcus passes the turn. Adam draws and casts a Preordain. He scries two and draws a card. He casts a Mana Ball. He ends the turn. Ryan draws and plays a Swamp. He casts Cabal Therapy targeting Adam. It resolves and Ryan names Force of Will. Adam reveals his hand and doesn't have a Force of Will. Ryan then casts Dark Ritual making three black. He casts Ad Nauseam. It resolves and Ryan reveals a Crystal Vein, Chromatic Sphere, Springleaf Drum, Misha's Bobble, Bubbling Muck, Swamp, Calling the Weak, Diabolic Intent, Grim Monolith, Lake of the Dead, Swamp, Reanimate, Expedition Map, Voltaic Key, Swamp, Walking Ballista, Chromatic Star, Memnite, Swamp, Cavern of Souls, Ornithopter, Codex Shredder, Hope of Giripur, Gemstone Caverns, Crater's Grasp, Jet Medallion, Swamp, Everflowing Chalice, Thought Vessel, Reign of Filth, Overeager Apprentice, Blood Pet, Peat Bog, Swamp, Swamp, Evan Stronghold, Swamp, Urza's Bobble, Jeweled Amulet, Animate Dead, Grim Tutor, and decides to stop there. He casts a Calling the Weak, sacrificing Yehenny and making four black mana. He casts Voltaic Key. He activates the key and untaps his mana ball. He casts an Ornithopter. He casts a Springleaf Drum. He casts a Grim Monolith. He casts Diabolic Intent, sacrificing Ornithopter, and fetches up a card into his hand. He casts a Quirk Clan Ironworks. He casts a Jeweled Amulet. He casts an Urza's Bauble. He casts an Everflowing Chalice, not kicked. He casts a Memnite. He sacrifices Everflowing Chalice to KCI for two colorless mana. He casts a Mishra's Bauble. He casts a Reign of Filth. He sacrifices both of his swamps for two black mana. He casts an Overeager Apprentice. He discards a card, sacrifices Overeager Apprentice, and then makes three black mana. He casts a Praetor's Grasp targeting Mike. He fetches up a card from Mike's library and then exiles it face down. He casts a Grim Tutor. He fetches up a card into his hand and then loses three life. He sacrifices Urza's Bobble, Jeweled Amulet, Springleaf Drum, Memnite, Grim Monolith, Mana Vault, Soul Ring, and Voltaic Key to KCI for 16 colorless mana. He casts a Yogg Moss Will. He recasts Memnite from his graveyard. He casts Springleaf Drum from his graveyard. He casts Dark Ritual from his graveyard and makes three black. He casts Calling the Weak from his graveyard, sacrificing Memnite, and then making four black. He casts an Ornithopter from his graveyard. He casts Diabolic Intent from his graveyard, sacrificing Ornithopter and fetching up a card into his hand. He casts an Aetherflux Reservoir. He casts a Soul Ring from his graveyard. Reservoir triggers and then Ryan gains 25 life. He casts a Mana Vault from his graveyard, triggering Reservoir and gaining 26. He then casts Mike's Bolus's Citadel from Exile. Ryan then presents a loop of activating top, drawing a card and putting top on top, casting it for one life through Bolus's Citadel from the top of his library, and then triggering Reservoir and gaining life. He does this 10 times and gains more than enough life to activate Reservoir, pay 50 life each, and deal 50 damage to each of his opponents, winning the game. Ladies and gentlemen, those were some crazy games. Congrats to Ryan, Marcus, and Mike on their wins. These games were heavily focused on Ad Nauseam and were a wild ride from start to finish. The most valuable card for tonight's games goes to Ad Nauseam. Every single game had an impactful moment or two due to this card. Ryan and Mike used it to full effect and put on a great show with them. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. If you want to be on an episode and play wild games like this, sign up to our Patreon. Also, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more great content. Tune in next time when we duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.
Okay, it is Patreon shoutout time. Want to give a Patreon shoutout to an Alaskan bullworm, Dark, Philip Hickey, D. Roach, Brad Tobin, Sanguinolency, Snarps the Clept, Matt Wingrove, Delph Driz, Dante, Baby Jeebus, Trey Payne, Rakeko, James O. Gunsikin, O. Gunsikin. O Gunsikin, that's a whew, all right, O Gunsikin, Zods, Noah Saldana, Wyon, Fur Bergland, Spielrahu, Sparks, CZ, and Nick. Thanks a lot, everyone. Really appreciate it.